Hi everyone, my name is Charlie and today I have my January wrap up. The first book I read in January was a reread for me and I read it throughout the majority of December but didn't finish it until the 1st of January and that book is The Name of the Wind by Patrick Rothfuss. This is the first book in the King Killer Chronicles and follows Quoth as he goes about his business in, in this world. And I will admit that the first time I read this book I didn't really like it at all. I found the character very arrogant and it wasn't until I was reading it the second time that I understood that actually arrogance can be a character trait and it isn't actually this, it isn't actually that the writer is trying to create a Mary Sue of sorts. So that's why if I were still doing star ratings, I originally gave it three stars, I would probably give it four stars now. However, the first time I read this book, I read it over a period of ten days and didn't enjoy it. And this time it took me a month to read it. And it's one of those books that I could put down. I could put down and I could forget about this book. I understand that it's a character-driven story, but I don't understand why it's loved so much. I, st I still don't get that. To me, although... Rothfuss is an exceptional writer and has created quite an exceptional world which has intricacies and the characters do feel fully formed and there is some definite coming of age story within this that reminds me a lot of the legends we used to hear about Robin Hood and King Arthur and the medieval sort of ideas that were in here worked really well. It reads like a legend or a myth or a fable and I cannot fault Rothfuss's writing style but personally I would have preferred more plot. I'm not really sure what it's getting at at the moment and I think that something that get that like keeps faith in the reader is this whole thing on the back of how he's talked to gods and he's saved princesses and he's burnt down cities and I think that that is what keeps people reading. He gets to the university and I kind of lose interest and I have no idea why. I, I do have The Wise Man's Fear to read and I will read it because I did enjoy this book more this time but it still has a lot of issues. The next book I saw at the charity shop I bought it and then I read it immediately and that book is How to Be a Woman by Catelyn Moran and this book is part memoir part part Moran's thoughts on feminism and how it relates to her life and how she has used experiences within her life to to inform her theories about feminism. I do have to say that I found this book humorous. This book promotes really good discussion about feminism and as soon as I finished it I went and I had this talk with Abercrombie and I talked to my friend Lindsay about what Moran talks about because I know that Lindsay had read this and Abercrombie's read other things to do with feminism in the past and to do with feminist theory and this to be honest was probably my first text that I sought because of its mention of feminism. I am constantly astonished at the male sex and their treatment of women and I can't understand it at all and this book just added fuel to that fire and I do recommend it for anyone who's interested in feminism but just if you want to read a humorous memoir and I know a lot of people have already read this and enjoyed it. I am hoping to go out and find some more of her books because I really enjoyed reading this. Next we have a book that really disappointed me and it's probably the book that disappointed me the most this month and it's Miss Marvel Volume 4 Last Days by G. Willow Wilson and Adrian Alfoma. And the reason that this book disappoints me is because it's leading into a crossover event for Marvel, therefore not much happens for the character of Miss Marvel, apart from the fact that she gets the chance to save her brother and to meet the original Miss Marvel, who now goes by Captain Marvel. And although it tied up a lot of the plot lines from the first few books, it still didn't do anything new, and I understand that it was like it was one of the prologues to this big event but still it was disappointing for me. After giving five stars to the first book and continuously enjoying the other books, this one was a very big disappointment for me in the fact that nothing happened and nothing changed for the characters really, apart from a few revelations and a few things with other characters that kind of felt forced. And honestly, I Miss Marvel is a series that should be read if you are interested in comic books but for me 
This one was disappointing, however I will be continuing with the series because I do like the character. Furiously Happy by Jenny Lawson. This book is a memoir again that chronicles Jenny Lawson's battles with mental illness. It is an exceptional book and it does discuss these things but it also discusses ways to get through. I believe that this is actually the first book in my entire life that I've actually sat there and laughed out loud to because it is hysterical. It's powerful and it's moving and I enjoyed this book immensely and I could reread this. This was one of those books that I finished and I thought I could, you know, I could open this again and just restart it again and go back and do it and I do believe that that's something I might do this year. I used to do it as a child and it's a habit that I'd like to pick back up again if I enjoyed a book enough to reread it at that time and to reread it straight away because who knows, later down the line you might reread it and not get the same thing that you want out of it. And Furiously Happy is definitely a book that I think people should read to inform themselves more about mental health issues. If you do ever feel low, this this could help you and it did help me. I finally read Night Film by Marisha Pessel. It follows Scott McGrath after his career, has, his journalistic career has toppled due to some not too nice things he said about the director Stanislas Cordova, a film director who created these very dark films. Scott McGrath has been investigating him for years and then he comes across the dead body of Cordova's daughter and this sets off a mystery. And I have to say that this book was brilliant. This book is very, very reminiscent of horror films of the past. It's a psychological thriller as well as just... It's just brilliant. It is fantastic. I read it... I read the majority of it in one sitting and then ended up having to go to bed and then started it and finished it the next day because it is it's one of those books that just captures you. You are very intrigued and want to know. I nearly stayed up through the night to read this, you know, if... I wasn't feeling sick from being that tired. And I have to say that Marisha Pessel has done really well with her characters here. At first, with some of the characters, I was worried they were going to turn into caricatures, but there was just kind of this in-depth analysis of who they were. You can see where their lives are. You have such hope for them as well, even though they're not the nicest of people and they haven't done the best of things. And this mystery is just something that keeps unpicking gradually. And but it becomes very clear of how things are going to work out. I was astounded. The book does everything that it has to, in my opinion. It does absolutely everything that it has to, to be this brilliant spectacle. And I was really glad to see these news articles, because to read the news articles that had been written and see these different clippings and these photographs, it kind of enhanced it for me, and it gave me this very filmic feel and it did feel like you could be watching a film. It was that good and I would recommend this to everybody. Everybody could read this unless you, you know like a child or had some issues with certain things. I don't know. A very good book anyway. Next we have the book that I mentioned in my book haul as helping me to decide to take my break from writing and to figure out what I wanted to write. That book is Big Magic by Elizabeth Gilbert. I've seen people recommend this book a few times or say that they've bought it and then Savannah J Foley wrote a blog post about it and talked about how it had changed how she views her creativity and so I decided that I would purchase it and I did and I read it and I have to say that I'm very thankful to have read this book and again like Furiously Happy I do think I'll need to reread it soon because some of the things that have happened have kind of to slip my mind but Elizabeth Gilbert writes in this style that she uses her own experiences to give you ideas about creativity. There's mention in here of a writer telling someone that if they're seeing writing as torturous not to do it. I think going into this book I'd kind of already thought that I needed to take a break from writing but this book cemented it for me and I couldn't be more grateful to a book than I am to Big Magic at the moment. I do recommend that anyone who is creative read this. If you're an artist, a singer, a dancer, even if what you are doing you don't think is art, I feel like you could get something from this. Any creative thinkers would do really well to read this book. I then read 
On Writers and Writing by Margaret Atwood, which was originally published as Negotiating the Dead. These are more essays about Atwood's thoughts on writing. And personally, I cared more about Atwood's stories about her own life, struggles she went through to get her work published. I hadn't realised there was such a struggle for Canadian writers. And this informed me quite a lot. And although it wasn't my favourite book this month by any means, I would still recommend it if you wanted to hear a great writer's thoughts on writing. I won't be talking about this book much because I did record a review and I'll leave a link down below, but the book is The Passion of New Eve by Angela Carter and this book really discusses gender politics and feminism and transgender issues. Personally did find the book quite disturbing, but disturbing in a way that makes you want to reread it simply for its darkness. Again, I won't be talking about this book much, but it is Truth Witch by Susan Dennard. I recorded a review. This book is fantastic. It completely lived up to the hype for me. I know some people say that the magic system was confusing. I was there myself. However, I am one of the people that doesn't believe that it should have a guide, and I only say that because I don't read them anyway. So I can't really have an opinion about that, but yes, I will leave a link to my review down below. Needless to say that I loved it, and if you want to see a actual proper review of someone who does this extremely well, then I will link a Thoughts on Tomes review below, because that talked about this book in... Uh, much better way than I did and said everything I wanted to say and more and I do believe that it is a brilliant brilliant video as this is a brilliant book. And finally I read Weird Things Customers Say in Bookshops by Jen Campbell. This book is a book filled with anecdotes again about weird things customers say in bookshops I found it humorous again, it was my second time reading it, and I now have to lend it out to two of my friends, so if we ever see this book again, I will be astonished. That's the books, I hope you enjoyed this video, if you want to discuss these books more then please do comment, because I would love to be able to discuss these books with people, because I thoroughly enjoyed them for the most part, and January was definitely a great reading month in terms for me. So until next time, that is all.